So we should have covered rates and rate stoichiometry, um, method of initial rates. Now we're going to look at um, three orders. So we can get um, uh, different exponents on our um, reactants for a rate law. The most common ones are going to be zero order, first order, and second order. There are other uncommon ones, uh, fractional order, even negative orders, but uh, these are the common ones. So the rate law for a zero order reaction is rate equals constant times the concentration to the zero order. That zero order makes the concentration disappear and we get a rate is equal to a constant. For a first order rate law, our rate is equal to a constant times the concentration to the power one. So rate equals constant times concentration. For second order rate law, we have rate equals constant times the concentration to the power two. So these are the three most common rate laws and we're going to integrate those rate laws. So these rate laws in the middle column, we can call them differential rate laws. The rate laws in the right column are the integrated rate laws. So when we have a zero order reaction, concentration equals minus KT plus log of, plus the initial concentration. So that is our integrated rate law for uh, a zero order reaction. So the rate does not depend upon concentration. We're just subtracting that from the initial concentration. We watch the concentration in time. This has the form of y equals mx plus b. So uh, y is the concentration, m is negative k. So the slope is a negative rate constant. x is time, and the intercept is the initial concentration. So that is a zero order reaction. For a first order reaction, we end up with log of the concentration equals minus kT plus log of the initial concentration. So again, it has the form of a y equals mx plus b. y is log of a. The slope is the negative k. x is time. And the intercept is is log, natural log of the initial concentration. For a second order reaction, the integrated rate law is one over the concentration equals KT plus one over the initial concentration. It still has a form of Y equals MX plus B. So Y is one over A, the slope is K, and the intercept is one over the initial concentration. So each of these orders has a different form for its linear equation. Zero order is concentration versus time is linear. First order is log of concentration versus time is linear. And second order is one over concentration versus time is linear. So we can use these differences in what is the most linear graph to determine the order of the reaction. We, of course, need sufficient data so we can plot a graph. But if we have that data, we can get the order of the reaction. So we would take the data, figure out concentration, log of concentration, and one over concentration, and plot all three of these and determine which one's most linear. So in this example here, the one over concentration is the most linear see an obvious deviation for log of concentration, an obvious deviation for concentration. So that would mean that we have a second order reaction. So that's how this graphing method works. We have to do all three graphs and determine which one is the most linear. And what's not shown on the graphs here is it's really good to get the correlation coefficient along with the equation. The correlation coefficient, the closer it is to one or negative one, depending on your software, 
uh, makes it linear. And uh, if software gives both positive and negative, positive is for positive slope, negative is for negative slope. So we can use this graphing method with the integrated rate laws to determine the order of the reaction. So just a little bit more about how the half-life behaves. We'll give you an equation for the half-life uh, momentarily. So for a zero-order reaction, the rate is constant. It just drops down. And it has a hard uh, end point. So it races toward that zero. So it says the straight line from the initial concentration down to its zero point. So our first half-life is half the time. Second half-life is a quarter of the time. Third half-life is an eighth of the time. So our half-life just keeps getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until it's microscopic in size. But we're racing for a hard endpoint on this one. So the, the slope is a negative slope. So that means the slope is negative k. The rate constant is always positive. And the slope for all three of these is um, just positive or negative with rate constant. So the rate constant is always the absolute value of the slope. For first order reaction, if we plot concentration first time, it's not linear as the zero order was but it's getting less and less steep as we go along. Uh, but what we'll find out uh, um, momentarily with the equations is that the half-life is a fixed time. So we have the same amount of time. So in this case, the half-life is 100 seconds. 200 seconds be two half-lives, 300 seconds be three half-lives. So the half-life is a constant. So our, our rate keeps getting slower and slower, and we can't point toward a hard endpoint. It's, we just keep dividing until there's finally nothing left. But the half-life is a constant for a first-order reaction. For a second-order reaction, it slows down faster than it does for a first-order reaction. So what we find is that half-life keeps increasing uh, for successive half-lives here, it keeps doubling. So we have a half-life. The next half-life is twice the time. The next half-life is twice again. So we keep doubling the time of the half-lives for a second-order reaction. So we have our um, particular plot that will be linear. We also see that the half-lives behave differently. So this is our summary here. So for a zero-order reaction, this rate equals a constant. The integrated rate law is, con is concentration equals minus kT plus the initial concentration. So that means our most linear plot should be concentration versus time. The slope is a negative k, so k will be a, a negative slope or absolute value of the slope. So for a zero-order reaction, the rate does not depend upon concentration. So if we double the concentration, rate remains the same. Our half-life, we solve it from the integrated rate law. And we get that the half-life is the initial concentration divided by 2K. So the bigger the initial concentration, the larger our half-life. The smaller the initial concentration, the smaller our half-life. So if we double our concentration, we double our half-life. As we go to smaller concentrations, successive half-lives, we have the time of the initial half-life. keeps dividing. For a first-order reaction, uh, rate equals k times concentration of the first power. I'm sorry, I don't have my powers up there in the right spot. Uh, the integrated rate law is the natural log of concentration is equal to minus kT plus the natural log of the initial concentration. So that means log of concentration versus time will be our most linear plot. Our slope is at negative k, so k is the absolute value of the slope. 
we double our concentration, our rate is going to double. So if we look in this uh, rate law, if we double here, two to the first power is still a double. So we double our rate. The half-life for a first order reaction is a constant. It's the natural log of two, which is 0 0.693, divided by the rate constant. So the half-life always remains the same amount of time for a first order reaction. So if we double the concentration, the half-life remains the same. And the successive half-lives remain the same. So a second order reaction will be rate equals K times concentration squared. The integrated rate law is one over concentration equals KT plus one over the initial concentration. And the most linear line should be one over concentration versus time. The slope will be equal to the rate constant. And if we double our concentration, if we look up in the first rate law here, we double A, that two squared would be four. So the rate quadruples. So if we double our concentration, rate quadruples. This is what we were using in the method of initial rates to determine orders of rates. Our half-life is equal to one over K times the initial concentration. So for doubling our concentration, we're cutting our half-life in half. So if we double our concentration, we cut our half-life in half. So our successive half-lives, as this A keeps dividing by two, the half-life doubles. So successive half-lives doubles. So by looking at how half-lives behaves, we can also help determine the order of reaction in addition to what we use for method of initial rates, the concentration. So let's go to the whiteboard and uh, try a couple problems using these rate laws. Okay, let me just make sure. So we have um, for the left one here, we have an initial concentration of 2.67 times 10 to the minus three. We're told that the plot of concentration version time is the most linear with a slope of minus 0 0.00132 minutes, inverse minutes. So we're asked what our rate constant is. Our rate constant is always the absolute value of the slope. So I will um, just convert this to scientific 1.32 times 10 to the minus 3 inverse minutes. So that's our rate constant. We're asked for the rate law. Well, concentration first time is a zero order rate law. So I'll write out the long form and condense it down to its final form. So a rate is equal to k, the value of k is 1.32 times 10 to minus three minutes. So the integrated rate law Integrated rate law will be A equals minus KT plus A zero. So we put our numbers in there. So we have a minus 1.32 times 10 to the minus three T plus A zero, the 2.67 times 10 to the minus three. So 
we notice the zero order reaction, so we put in the zero order law and then fill in the numbers that we have for that. Our half life is the initial concentration, so we fill in our numbers. And then we reduce it down and it comes out to be 10.1 minutes. The last question dealing with this bit of information that we start off with is, uh, well, we're adding in one more. So what is the concentration at 15.1 minutes? So we'll use our integrated rate law. So our concentration is our minus K. times time plus the initial oh time we have a 15.1 and we should just make sure the units are matching so we have 15.1 minutes the slope is inverse minutes so the units will cancel off so we run this through our calculator and don't have the final answer, but no. Interesting. We end up with our concentration at 15.1 minutes. I'm doing concentration of A equals a 6.77 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity. So we can try to do a little logic check. Our half life was 10 minutes. We're um, uh, beyond the first half life. Uh, we, our half life cuts in half, so we're close to our second half life. And we cut that in half, we had a 1.3. Cut in half, we get between a six and a seven. So yes, it does seem like we have, uh, uh, we're... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Our logic is uh, not right. So, 2.67 minus this number, we should get a smaller number. Why is it not showing a smaller number here? Um, oh, 2.67 to minus 3. I typed it in wrong. Okay. Okay. Ah, oh, cotton edit. Do I not have this uh, right here? This is some something. Uh, can't be right. Fifteen half life is ten. We're not two half lives. Fifteen slope. Uh, 
half life. Pause this. Well, I'm sorry for that, but my uh, logic check I did there caught the mistake I had. Um, I was working on a working off a piece of paper. I had ten to the minus two up here, not ten to the minus three, so I miscopied it when I wrote it up here. So it didn't affect our uh, rate constant, our rate law, our integrated rate law, but it affected the half life. So I had ten to the minus um, two on my notes, and ten to the minus three down here gave me ten minutes. But it's really 1.01 minute for the half life. So I had to give us a different time to work with this. So I gave us a 0.65 uh, minutes. So putting that into the integrated rate law. So we're going to have our um, uh, 0.65 minutes for the time. And again, minutes will cancel off with inverse minutes in our slope. And then that gives us a value of uh, 1.81 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity at that 0.65 minutes. So we're um, um, not up to the half life yet. So we haven't used up half of the concentration yet. So another problem, hopefully I won't have a mistake on this one. Um, we have initial concentration of 3.25 times 10 to the minus 2 molarity. And our log of concentration versus time is a most linear graph. It gives us a slope of minus 1.57 times 10 to the minus 2 inverse minutes. So what's our rate constant? Rate constant is always the absolute value of the slope. So it's 1.57 times 10 to the minus 2 inverse minutes. And our rate law. Well, the natural log uh, plot means that we have a first uh, order rate law. So our rate law is going to be a, a constant times the concentration to the first power. Well, we have that constant, so we put it in 1.57 times 10 to the minus 2 times the concentration. So the integrated rate law that's now based on our natural log of A. And it would be a, a minus KT. So I'm going to replace that K with the numerical value 1.57 times 10 to the minus 2. So minus kt times t plus the natural log of the initial concentration. And we have that, so I'll put that number in. And uh, I didn't write out the two steps here. So we're doing um, for this number, um, natural log of the 3.25 times 10 to the minus 2. So we'll put the actual number in, and that is a uh, minus 3.427. So that'll be our intercept. The half-life is natural log of 2 over our rate constant. So natural log of 2 is uh, 0 0.693 over our k, 1. 0.57 times 10 to the minus 2. And we uh, reduce that number and we end up with a half life of 44.1 minutes. So now we're asking for the concentration at uh, 60 minutes of time. So we want to use our uh, integrated rate law to solve this. So we have our ln of a. So it's our minus k, 1.57 times 10 to the minus 2 times the time we're looking at, 60 minutes. So we have minutes, inverse minutes, so our units are canceling off. 
then uh, minus 3.472. So we reduce this down. So natural log of A comes out to be uh, minus 4.369. So then our A will be equal to E raised to the power of negative 4.369. Run that through our calculator. And we end up with a value of 0 0.0127 molarity. So we start off with a 0 0.03, we're down to a 0 0.01 on this. So let's do one more of these. Let me swap the board. So now we have a initial concentration of 5.65 times 10 to minus three. And we find that the plot of one overcome concentration versus time is the most linear. And we have a slope, messed that up a little bit, standing next to it, uh, 4.75 times 10 to minus three inverse seconds. Point. Ooh, let me, uh, I'm not looking at the right one here, okay. Okay, that's the right one. Uh, so our rate constant is always the absolute value of slope. So 4.75 times 10 to the minus three inverse seconds. So right though, the one over concentration versus time means that we have a second order uh, rate law. So it's rate constant times concentration squared. And of course we can write this with the value in here for rate constant 4.75 times 10 to the minus three times concentration squared. So the integrated rate law, that will be the one over concentration. And we see a positive slope here. So it's a positive KT plus one over the initial concentration. So we can stick in our values for that. So we have a K of 4.75 times 10 to the minus three inverse seconds times time plus, we put it up here. So one over the initial concentration, 5.65 times 10 to the minus three. And that will go down here as, 177.0. So our integrated rate law, one over concentration equals 4.75 times 10 to minus three times time plus 177.0. So our half-life our half-life is um, one over the rate constant times the initial concentration. Bring it out a little bit, so. So we put our numbers in there. Our rate constant, 4.75 times 10 to the minus three our initial concentration, 5.65 times 10 to the minus three. We run this through our calculator and we find that our half-life is 37,261 seconds. So we can take that to a three significant digits. We have a 3.73 times 10 to the fourth seconds for our half-life. So now we're asking for the concentration at 
time of 2.5 times 10 to the fourth. 2.5, so we're not quite at half-life. So I'll have more than the half the compound left. So we're going to use our integrated rate law here. So we have one over the concentration equals the rate constant, 4.75 times 10 to the minus 3, times the time, our 2.5 times 10 to the fourth seconds, plus 177. So if we run that through our calculator, we end up with a 295.75. But this is for one over the concentration. So it's not concentration yet. So to get the concentration, we have to do one over this. So our concentration will be equal to one over the 295.75, which equals 3.38 times 10 to the minus three with units of molarity. So that would be our final concentration at uh, 2.5 times 10 to the fourth seconds. So that's how we can use our graphs. We can determine the order reaction. And then from that, we can get rate constant, rate law, half-life, and then concentration at uh, any time that we want.